In this video, we are going to be discussing Daniel Sell. But before that, we need to discuss whatever you learned in class 11 in Redox, uh, in the chapter Redox Reactions. So electrochemical cells are classified basically into two, direct and indirect cells. Direct cells are the ones where you have both the oxidation and the reduction reaction taking place in the same vessel and obviously indirect where will be where you have them taking place in different vessels and this is the example of a daniel cell uh, this is not an example but the daniel cell is an example of an indirect electrochemical cell so let's start with direct okay here you have a electro like a beaker which has the zinc which is your electrode and the copper sulfate which is going to be the electrolyte right so initially when before we put the thing in or right after we put it in what are the things we might observe so what starts to happen is basically um the zinc will start getting dissolved into the solution and it will start losing weight slowly and steadily. So there is a zinc losing weight. Okay. And the second thing that's observed is that over time, the color of copper, the, you know, the blue color of copper, this is basically the blue color of copper sulfate, that starts to fade. So CuSO4 starts fading or instead of saying CuSO4 blue of CuSO4 starts to fade okay so what happens over here is zinc is losing weight blue of the copper sulfate starts to fade and the copper either starts to get deposited on the electron that is the zinc or you start seeing it's settling at the bottom. Okay, so zinc is undergoing some reaction which leads to it being in solution and copper is on, the copper ions are undergoing some reaction that leads for it to become either metal that's deposited on the electrode or settle down at the bottom. So basically, the overall reaction which is observed is zinc. So zinc which is a solid, right? is combining with Cu2 plus to give rise to Zn2 plus plus Cu. So zinc is undergoing oxidation, loss of electrons. Copper ions are undergoing reduction because they're gaining electrons to form copper metal. And that's why you see the decrease of copper ions leads the thing to start to fade and zinc metal undergoing oxidation leads to it to move into the solution. So this happens till the equilibrium is achieved. Okay, so in this reaction, there are two things we need to remember. One, the heat which is, the energy which is released is in the form of heat okay and the this there is no electricity generated so basically if you remember in the first video uh, the electrochemistry is going to be about ability for us to convert the chemical energy from the spontaneous process to the electrical energy over here you do have a chemical reaction which is spontaneous but you do not have the formation of electricity instead we get it out as heat so in this case we have chemical energy getting converted to heat. So essentially, the indirect electrochemical cells, you have the energy released in the form of heat. Okay, so that is a very important thing for us to remember. So when they, so then they were like, okay, this makes sense. What What's happening over here is the electrons that are coming out from the zinc metal are just directly transferring to the copper. Now, if you remember, the movement of electrons is what causes the electricity to be produced, right? So, in this case, you have two vessels and you have some wires that are, that are attached to it. This means that the electrons have to move some distance and this in turn leads to the generation of electricity. So, when we have our uh, both the electrolytes in different vessels, that automatically means that it's going to be an indirect electrochemical cell. If you notice, you're going to have this almost the same reaction for both of these. However, because they are in two separate vessels, like your zinc sulfate is in this 
side copper sulfates on that side and so they're on separate vessels because of that you have the generation of electricity okay so moving on to the daniel cell daniel cell is it is the exam is an example of a galvanic cell uh, basically it was so okay you have two electrodes in this cell okay zinc and copper these are our electrodes our electrolytes are zinc sulfate and copper sulfate okay and these are both connected to each other by a salt bridge okay so when you have this uh, oh when you have the salt bridge it basically can say it consists of a uh, solution of electrolyte which contain like kcl kno3 basically these salt bridges do not undergo a chemical change the salt bridge does not have a chemical change taking place however it helps in completing the um circuit basically that that's to make sure it completes the circuit if you had it separate you would not have the transfer of electrons taking place so we we also have a switch which i have not drawn i know um so when the switch is open you have nothing happening you will have your zinc on this side zinc sulfate copper sulfate and copper they're all fine but the moment you, the switch is closed there is some there are certain things that are observed the first thing is that the zinc loses weight the zinc loses weight and copper gains weight okay zinc is losing weight copper is gaining weight that is the zinc electrode is losing weight copper electrode is gaining weight the second thing that's observed is that concentration of serin so4 what do you think will happen zinc is losing weight this means that it's moving into the solution so obviously this means that it's moving into this particular solution so the concentration of zinc sulfate increases and concentration of copper sulfate will obviously decrease so concentration of zinc sulfate is going up concentration of copper sulfate is going down okay now and these solutions are obviously electrically neutral but there is a electric current that flows through the circuit so the this is the ammeter and you start seeing that there is a electric current that's flowing through the circuit okay so what's happening here it's going to be the exact same reaction as this one so first of all let me write the overall reaction zinc solid is combining with cu2 plus to give us cu actually let's do it the other way though um gives us just to keep it consistent zn2 plus plus cu which is a solid so these are our ions which are in the solution so basically what's happening is zinc it's the exact same thing but the only difference is that it's in two different vessels and this leads to the formation of the electric current so on this side the reaction that's taking place is zinc is getting converted to zinc zn2 plus ion which means it's undergoing oxidation loss of electrons is always going to be oxidation and the copper ion is undergoing reduction and i did put a video discussing oxidation and reduction uh in detail or like f to the extent that you need it so definitely check it out so zinc is getting is getting oxidized whereas copper is getting reduced right zinc is getting oxidized copper is getting reduced in this particular cell so electrons that are released in the zinc so there is an electron that is going two electrons that are releasing what will happen is it starts moving towards the copper and this copper ion is going to take those grab those electrons and it's going to get reduced okay so the electrons oopsie <laughs> oh, sorry okay so the electrons are flowing in this direction 
and the ele electrons are flowing from zinc to copper. So there is an electrical flow from copper to zinc. The, there is an electrical current that flows between from copper to zinc. So it's always the opposite, right? The flow of electron, the current is going to be the opposite of that. So you have the flow of current opposite to that. Um, so that's it. So these are the things that are observed. If you notice, it's quite similar to what we see here. But because we have these bias in place, you're able to see the electricity that is formed. Or, I mean, you can't see it, see it. But you, because there's a flow of electrons, you have the energy releasing in the form of electricity. And in this case, it was in the form of heat. Okay, so these, so this arrangement was called an electrochemical this whole arrangement or setup is called an electrochemical set so this is a device that converts electrical <laughs> chemical energy to electrical energy and this can also be called as galvanic cells or voltaic cells that's what you had learned in your last year there's one other thing that i'd like to talk about so in this case so when you have such uh yeah, when you have this setup in place you the there is an electrical potential of 1.1 volts that is obtained that is reached okay so the pot electrical potential of this particular cell is 1.1 volts when the concentration of our, both the zinc and the copper ions are 1 moles per decimeter cube Okay, so this particular, in this case, the potential, when your concentration of zinc and copper sulfate is unity or one mole per decimeter cube, you have the potential that is obtained at 1.1 volts. So let's assume I connect another thing, okay, another setup where you have it being able to, um, or let me rephrase. Let me assume. Let's assume that we are doing. We are adding this, which helps us to apply an external potential in the opposite direction, or external potential is applied. So when an external potential is applied. We will slowly increase it, right? So there are three cases, obviously, to this. First of all, where E external is less than 1.1 volts. The second would be E external. The opposing potential is, great, is equal to 1.1 volts. And E external is greater than 1.1 volts. Okay, so it does not matter what the value is, it just needs to be less than, equal to or greater than. Okay, in the first case, when it is less than, you would see uh, it does not get disrupted. Okay, the reaction is going to continue the way it has, where you have electrons getting flows from the zinc to copper, and then you have the zinc getting dissolved into the solution, copper gaining in mass. And the same thing is observed. Basically, what we see in normal conditions is observed when the external potential is less than 1.1. When the external potential is equal to 1.1, it's basically going to oppose it, right? So that in turn means that you do not have anything happening. There will be no flow of electrons. There will be no chemical reactions taking place, okay, when it's equal to 1.1. And in the third case, when it's greater than 1.1, you have the opposite happening. Okay, so in that case, what will happen is copper will start, the uh, co copper will start undergoing oxidation and zinc will start undergoing reduction. That is when an external potential in the opposite direction is applied. Copper is going to under, start undergoing, basically, there are going to be a flow of electrons from copper to zinc. So, in this case, zinc will start getting deposited. So essentially, when its E external is greater than 1.1, you have Zn2 plus plus 2 electrons gives rise to Zn, and Cu gives rise to Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons. This is what is observed. So when this happens, this starts to act as an electrolytic cell. 
An electrolytic cell is basically the one where you have the electrical energy being used to help with a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. So the this is a spontaneous chemical reaction. Zinc plus copper, Cu2 plus gives rise to Zn2 plus plus Cu is a spontaneous chemical reaction. However, Zn2 plus plus Cu gives rise to Cu2 plus plus Zn is a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. So when the, e, the external force that is, is applied and it's greater than 1.1 volts, then the reaction is going to start, it becomes not it's going to start helping the non-spontaneous process to take place. So basically, you are using the energy for it to undergo this particular reaction. So that's it. So an electrolytic cell is an opposite of a Daniel or a galvanic cell. Um, and these, we will be studying them both in detail in the you know, next couple of videos. So that's all we learned in this video. We talked about the direct and indirect electrochemical cells and although we took the same example we understood how they are different from each other um, and I hope all of this made sense. Do let me know if you have any other questions and thank you for whoever requested these video, this video. It honestly provides a lot of encouragement for me to do these things. Uh, in the next video we will be talking about galvanic cells.